Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to continue with our anatomy book club on the Ryan Anatomy for Diagnostic Imaging. Dr. Shadan will present the rest of the abdomen to us. You can start. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today's subject is small and large intestine. Uh, the small intestine. The small intestine uh, it's clinically referred uh, referred to the uh, intestine, uh, the uh, duodenum and the ileum. And the uh, duodenum is referred to it by its own name. But uh, anatomically, small intestine refers to duodenum, duodenum and ileum. Mm -hmm. uh, the small intestine uh, begins uh, where the intestine assumes a mesentery at the duodenal fracture. As in this picture, we see this is duodenal fracture. Uh, and uh, the me its mesentery extended from the uh, left of the uh, second lumbar vertebra uh, to the uh, downward and la uh, to the right until uh, the uh, right ileocecal junction at the uh, right sacroiliac joint. Uh, it's varied from uh, in length uh, from three to ten m uh, meters and average of six meters. Uh, the small intestine is very mobile, and uh, the two fifths of it is the duodenum, and the three fifth is the ileum. And the boundary between these is not well defined. Uh, in this picture, we see these uh, uh, valvular cone events. Uh, this is mucosal fold uh, and uh, it uh, begins from the second part of the duodenum uh, and continues distally, but it's decreased distally until the uh, terminal ileum. It may be absent. This is mucosal fold, uh, more uh, in the duodenum and less in the ileum. On the ileum, uh, there is the submucosal lymphoid tissue uh, aggregation uh, called the pyrus patch. This is o uh, oval in shape, and it uh, acts as a tonsil and destroys the bacteria. Uh, it's more common in the ileum and not found in the duodenum. Uh, this is the differentiation between the duodenum and the ileum. Uh, the diameter of the duodenum is wide, uh, wider than the ileum, uh, 3 to 3.5 uh, centimeters, and the ileum is narrower, 2.5 centimeters. Uh, the wall thickness of the duodenum is uh, thicker, and uh, the ileum is thinner because the uh, valvular conivance is more uh, present uh, and uh, thicker in the duodenum, and it is uh, less in the ileum and widely separated. Uh, the position of the duodenum to the left and the uh, to the left and upper abdomen, and the ileum located in the right and lower abdomen. Uh, the valvular cone events are thicker and more prominent in the ileum, in the duodenum, sorry, and it's thinner in the ileum. Uh, the pyrus patch is fewer uh, and bigger in the duodenum. It's present, but fewer and bigger, uh, but uh, it's more numerous and smaller in the ileum. Uh, the arterial arcades, uh, one or two uh, with fewer long branches, uh, but in the ileum, uh, four to five with many short branches. This is the arterial arcades. Uh, this is like anastomosis between the uh, between the branches uh, of the artery. In the uh, duodenum, it is uh, one uh, or two uh, like rows, and then continue in long and uh, fewer branch uh, called the vasa recta. And uh, in the ileum, it's uh, three to or five rows, and then continues as uh, vasa recta, and it's uh, more numerous and uh, small uh, and uh, smaller, shorter. Uh, in this uh, v uh, radiograph, we see this for uh, barium meal and barium follow through. Uh, we see the duodenum located in the right and the upper quadrant, and the ileum in the uh, sorry in the left and upper quadrant, and the ileum in the right and lower quadrant. And the uh, valvular cone events, it's more prominent in the duodenum and it's thicker and it's less in the ileum, and in the distal ileum may be uh, not present, and the distal ileum is uh, more smooth. Uh, the supply, uh, the arterial supply of the uh, small intestine is from the superior mesenteric artery, uh, which originate from the aorta at the level of the first lumbar uh, vertebra. Uh, this is the su superior mesenteric artery, and this one is the aorta. And the superior mesenteric artery is slightly to the right, and gives the branch uh, from the left to the uh, small intestine. This is duodenal branch, and the lower to it, it is the ileal branch. And uh, the first uh, and the lower part of the, to the right is the iliocolic artery, uh, and uh, above it is the right colic, and uh, the most uh, uh, upward one is the uh, middle colic artery. Uh, the veins uh, drain to the superior mesenteric vein, uh, which uh, drain to the portal vein. Uh, 
the lymph, uh, lymph drainage is the, to the superior mesenteric group uh, of the periaortic nodes. Sorry. Mikkel's diverticulum. Uh, this uh, diverticulum represents the intestinal end of the vitello intestinal duct, which connects the yolk sac to the primitive digestive tube in the early fetal life. Uh, this project, uh, uh, this projection is seen on the anterior mesenteric border of the lower ilium. This is the mechal diverticulum in the uh, anti-mesenteric border of the lower ilium. Uh, it has a memorial aid uh, known as the roll of two. Uh, its incidence is about 2%. Uh, it's about 2 inches long and uh, located 2 feet from the ileocecal valve, uh, male to female, 2 to 1 ratio, uh, often uh, symptomatic before 2 years of age and contains two types of ectopic tissue, uh, pancreatic and gastric. In this uh, barium imaging, we see this is the area of Michael diverticulum in the uh, terminal ilium. The radiological features of the small intestine uh, in the plain film, uh, gas fluid level uh, may be seen. Uh, it's ab about five gas fluid level with a loop of diameter of two to uh, 2.5 centimeters regarded as normal, and uh, or two loops wider than this also regarded as normal. And we, as we said, the jejunal loops big, uh, in the left upper uh, abdomen and the ilial loops in the right lower uh, abdomen. Yani in normal uh, fluid levels will uh, small bowel. It's, uh, five, uh, five. five uh, right. Yes. Ah, okay, I mean. Two fluids, two levels of five okay. centimeter wide, wide um, or five levels of, of two, two centimeter sorry. wide. Yes, disregard as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, the barium study of the small intestine uh, can do the barium follow through uh, when barium is taken orally and imaged as it passes through the cecum or uh, we do uh, small bowel enema, uh, this or enterocrisis, a tube is passed into the duodenogenal flexure and barium is passed directly into the small intestine. Uh, normal upper limit of diameter uh, are higher for the distended bowel than the relaxed uh, state. Uh, the diameter of up to five uh, centimeters in the duodenum and three centimeters in the ilium are normal in the small uh, bowel enemas. Uh, normal valvular convenience may be uh, as um, up to uh, two millimeters thick in the duodenum and one millimeter thick in the ilium. Uh, and the, uh, maybe the valvular convenience absent in the ilium uh, and regards as featureless appearance. Uh, this is the valvular convenience. It's what thicker. is this exam? Uh, this is ba uh, barium meal and uh, follow through. No. This is ba small bowel enema, I think. Yes, uh, small bowel enema, we can see the uh, tube. Yeah, but uh, you don't, in usual and follow through, you don't see this complete opacification of all the jujunum and all the ilium in one view. It's the contrast moves with yeah. imaging, okay? Yes. While you do enema to get this picture, you get complete opacification of everything at the same time. And they inject like really large amounts of contrast, like liters, two, three liters, directly into the small bowel to inflate them. So uh, I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't think this is a follow through. This is so most about likely the stoma, so there will be reflex, yeah, if Maybe you put ma, the, the, the tube is in the duodenal It should be in the duodenal flexure. Yes. Maybe they removed it and something reflexed, I don't know. City of the small intestine, uh, contrast uh, is given orally, uh, and uh, we see the uh, small bowel contain contrast. We can uh, differentiate it from a mass in the abdomen. It's located in the uh, middle uh, part of the abdomen. This is the small bowel loops. And uh, here is the uh, descending colon, and here is the ascending colon. Also, the uh, vessels and the uh, lymph nodes can be seen in the CT and the mesentery. <laughs> You need to scroll through the images. You should, if it is continuous, it's your or or artery or vein or whatever. If it stops, then it appears and disappears immediately. Then it's a lymph node, most likely. Or a mass or a tumor or something. Superior mesenteric artery angiogram. This is selective superior mesenteric artery angiogram. You're familiar from this from the last week. Yes. Good. Okay. This is the catheter in the descending aorta. And here is a superior mesenteric uh, artery. The abdominal aorta, no, no descending aorta. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the abdominal aorta, and this is the superior mesenteric artery. Uh, the first uh, branch is the duodenal branch, 
and uh, as we said, it gives fewer archives and long and uh, long and, fe uh, and fewer uh, vasa recta. Uh, here is the ilium, ilium branch. Uh, this more uh, archives and uh, short and few uh, more numerous uh, vasa recta. Uh, this, uh, and this is the uh, iliocecal. This is the ileal branch. Sorry, th these two uh, uh, are the jejunal branch, and this one is the ileal branch, and this one is the ilio uh, colic branch. And uh, here, this one is the right colic, and the above one is the uh, middle colic. The ileocecal valve. Uh, this uh, the distal ileum <laughs> opens. Uh, this distal ileum opens into the medial and posterior aspect of the a large intestine at the junction of the cecum with the ascending. Below this valve uh, is the cecum and above it is the ascending colon. And uh, the mucosa, the chrysentric mucosal fold, uh, two, two horizontal chrysentric fold uh, of the mucosa and circular muscle project into the lumen. Uh, these two folds uh, form the frenula of the valve and the circular muscle uh, form the act as a sphincter. Just uh, like lips of a mouth, mm -hmm. two yes. frenula. Like two lips. Could be competent or incompetent. The, uh, both is normal in uh, the ileocecal valve. Can be competent or incompetent. The competent will prevent the uh, prevent the, uh, the reflex of the uh, fluid. Yeah, when you have a uh, large bowel yeah. obstruction, if the ileocecal valve is competent, there would be pure large bowel, bestial colon. Only the colon would be dilated because the valve closed competent. Yes, yes. If it is incompetent, you have large bowel obstruction, the whole colon dilated, and the small, small bowel will also start to get dilated because it's incompetent, reflux yes. the contents into the small bowel. The radiological features of the ileocecal valve uh, in the plain film, uh, as the doctor said, it, Ahmed, the gaseous distension of the colon is seen proximal to the site of colonic obstruction. In some cases, if the ileocecal valve is competent, so uh, the marked distension of the cecum uh, with, uh, occur without a distension of the small intestine. In other patients where the valve is incompetent, there will be distension of the small and the large bowel. In the barium enema examination, the ileocecal valve may present as a filling defect at the posterior medial wall of the cecum. Uh, this is case of bowel obstruction when the valve is incompetent. Uh, we have a large bowel obstruction, also small bowel obstruction dilated, both parts. Uh, this is uh, in case of uh, the barium imaging. I think it's. Uh, this is a follow through. Yeah. Yes. You see, it's not pure all the. But also, the stomach is. Yeah. Here is the area of ileocecal valve. Mm -hmm. uh, in the city, uh, the fat accumulation around the ileocecal valve makes it easy to visible, uh, uh, and especially if the ca case in obese uh, a woman. The appendix uh, arises uh, at the convergence of the uh, tinea coli on the pro posterior medial wall of the cecum. Uh, it's about uh, 2.5 centimeters below the ileocecal valve. Its length is variable uh, between 12 to uh, 24 centimeters long. Uh, it has its own mesentery uh, called the mesoappendix. The lumen of the appendix is wide in the infant and obliterated in the elderly, uh, so the uh, acute appendicitis uh, are extremely rare in the extremes of life. The position of the appendix uh, is variable. Uh, the most common one is the uh, retrocecal uh, and the pelvis. And this is pre and post ileal. Uh, and and keep in mind, retrocecal is the most difficult one to be visualized by ultrasound. And it's the most common location of the appendix. Yes. So that's why ultrasound is not that easy to diagnose appendicitis because most of them are retrocecal. You see, everything clinically goes with appendicitis. You want to see the appendix, you cannot. If it is retrocecal, gas in the cecum will prevent its visualization. You may use some graded compression to empty the cecum, but it's not always working. So if you cannot see it and the patient clinically looks like appendicitis, you report the appendix cannot be seen between brackets retrocecal, maybe retrocecal in position, or should be suspected retrocecal position. Okay? So this is appendicitis. Uh, and surgeons, they have a saying, they say, if you don't have like about 10% of normal appendix removed, then probably you are not diagnosing appendicitis enough. 
يعني usually the surgeons they 10% of their appendectomy is normal usually the arterial supply of the appendix is from the appendicular artery which is a branch uh, of the uh, iliocolic artery this is the appendicular artery comes from the iliocolic artery and runs in the mesentery of the appendix and the mesentery of the appendix is continuation of the mesentery of the small intestine in case of infection of the intestine uh, sorry of the appendix when it causes the infarction and ischemia of the appendicular artery uh, there will be gangrenous of the appendix. Uh, this is unlike uh, the gallbladder because the gallbladder has a rich collateral supply from the liver and uh, the gangrene will not occur, uh, but occur in rare cases. Uh, the appendix uh, in the plain uh, abdominal film, you can see uh, fecal leaf uh, or uh, fluid level uh, in about 10% of individuals. Uh, on ultrasound, uh, this is blind ended tube arising from the posterior aspect of the cecum. This the cecum, this appendix, and it's anterior to the iliac vessels. Is uh, in case of uh, where it's typical, but unfortunately, most of the time it's not yeah, typical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in case this uh, picture is typical. Nice. Uh, in case of uh, retrocecal position, uh, gradual uh, graded, graded compression of the cecum is uh, needed, needed to visualize the appendix. This is CT of the uh, abdomen. Uh, we see the normal appendix uh, contains gas. Uh, here also this is the uh, location of the appendix. Uh, the appendix can be uh, seen filled with gas or contrast. Uh, in both cases, uh, no, it's normal. Abdominal CT, this is showing appendicitis. Here is a thick wall of the appendix uh, with some uh, fluid around the appendix. So what are the findings of appendicitis? At least on ultrasound, let's say. Uh, it's uh, ultrasound, big thick wall, uh, diameter more than six millimeters, mm -hmm. um, uh, non compressible, mm -hmm. uh, non peristaltic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's already non peristaltic. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, sometimes there's free fluid or uh, okay, stranding of the fat around the appendix. What about tenderness and the uh, uh, It's tender, uh, tender at the side of vascularity, yes. stranding, surrounding fat planes. You might find some uh, lymph nodes, maybe uh, paralytic areas around it. You might find some in, uh, right mesenteric lymph nodes. All of these are findings suggestive of appendicitis. Come on, lab tests of elevated Three white blood, blood cells and things like that. Appendicial abscess, uh, uh, it's found uh, when there's infected of the appendix and cause abscess uh, formation in a variety of locations uh, because the appendix is in, uh, on a mesentery and it's mobile. Uh, the pus will uh, spread and cause uh, abscess in uh, many locations. Uh, pus may travel inferiorly to the retrovesical uh, or uh, retrorectal uterine pouch uh, and superiorly in the right uh, paracolic gutter uh, to the subhepatic space. In this case, uh, this is showing the appendicular abscess. I think it's hypodense. Area Fluid and with the thick fat wall, enhancing wall, enhancing yes. wall, uh, surrounding stranded, surrounded fat planes. However, it's not very typical location. It's ascending up. Usual appendicular abscess mm. will be in the pelvis, okay. and it involves the anterior abdominal wall, which is quite yes. Yes. strange. Yeah. Maybe okay. Maybe some anatomical variance in location. Yeah. The large intestine uh, is very variable uh, with an average length of 1.5 meter uh, with a maximum diameter of the cecum about uh, 6 centimeters and nine. transverse colon 5 to, sorry, 9. Okay. <laughs> 9 uh, <laughs> centimeter <laughs> and the transverse colon about 5 to 5 uh, centimeter. Uh, cecum is a blind pouch uh, of uh, large bowel proximal to the ileocecal valve. It's approximately 6 centimeters long and usually has its own mesentery, making uh, it mobile and uh, easily uh, distensible. The ascending uh, colon runs from the ileocecal valve uh, to the inferior surface of the liver, where it turns medially uh, into the hepatic flexure. The transverse colon runs from the hepatic flexure across the midline to the splenic flexure. The descending colon runs from the splenic flexure inferiorly to the sigmoid colon. Uh, this area uh, is the cecum below the ileocecal valve and then continues upward as the ascending ascending colon. This is the right hepatic uh, the right hepatic flexure or colon right colonic flexure. 
and this the transverse colon and this is the disciplinic fracture uh, the flexure the disciplinic flexure is higher than the hepatic flexure and this is the descending colon and here is the sigmoid and this is the rectum and anal canal uh, coli, uh, these are three flattened bands of longitudinal muscle that uh, converge on the appendix and proximally and rectal distally. This is the tinea coli. This is three longitudinal uh, flattened muscle. And uh, the appendix and re rectum are completely uh, surrounded by this, this longitudinal uh, muscle. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, this uh, tinea coli about uh, three, uh, 30 centimeters shorter than the colon and uh, cause the, uh, this, uh, the formation of the circulation, uh, which uh, give rise to the uh, incomplete septa called the house track. This circulation, and this is the house track, incomplete septa. Uh, the, the, this uh, house track scattered over the free surface of the large intestine, except for the cecum and the rectum, and uh, there, is a f there are some fat-filled peritoneal tags called the appendices uh, epiploica. These are especially numerous in the sigmoid colon. This is the uh, epiploic appendage. Uh, when it's twist, uh, it may cause infarction and ischemia and cause uh, local pain, uh, local abdominal pain. And uh, its <coughs> diagnosis is difficult because uh, most of the time the evangings are normal. Uh, but uh, when there is uh, fat stranding around the uh, colon at the site of the pain, uh, this uh, refers to the epiploic appendicitis. The peritoneal attachments uh, of the colon, uh, the ascending and descending uh, colon are retroperitoneum, covered anteriorly and on both sides by the peritoneum. Uh, the peritoneal space is lateral to this, called the uh, paragolic attar. Here, the right paragolic attar, and here is the left paragolic attar. Uh, occasionally, the ascending colon has a mesentery. Uh, the cecum is completely uh, covered by mesentery and is relatively mobile. The transverse colon is always has a mesentery called mesocolon, uh, which is uh, which hangs between the the transverse colon hangs between the hepatic and splenic flexure, uh, which are fixed points. The splenic flexures attached to the diaphragm by the phrenicocolic ligament. Uh, here, location of the phrenicocolic ligament, and the uh, greater curve of the stomach uh, lies in the concavity of the uh, transverse colon, and uh, attached to the transverse colon by the gastrocolic ligament. Uh, the mesocolon continues uh, below the transverse colon as the greater omentum and superior it attached to the anterior inferior surface of the pancreas. The sigmoid colon has uh, a mesentery uh, called mesosigmoid. Uh, this attached to the posterior abdominal wall to the left of the midline and in an inverted V-shaped uh, whose limbs diverge from the bifurcation of the common iliac uh, artery over the sacroiliac joint at the pelvic brim. The rectum has peritoneum anteriorly and right laterally in its upper third and uh, just anteriorly in the middle third and the lower third of the rectum is below the pelvic peritoneum. Uh, this is the uh, lesser omentum and uh, this the two is the transverse mesocolon between the hepatic and the splenic flexure. Uh, this is the uh, mesentery of the small intestine it begins from the left to the second lumbar vertebra to the right sacroiliac joint, about uh, 50 centimeters long. And this is the sigmoid mesentery. The arterial supply of the colon, uh, the, tra the part of the colon derived from the mid-gut, uh, cecum to the mid-transverse colon, is supplied by the superior mesentric artery. Uh, the gut, uh, which, which is divided into the foregut, mid-gut, and head-gut, the foregut is mainly supplied by the celiac trunk, uh, the mid-gut supplied by the superior mesentric uh, artery, uh, the mid-gut which starts from the second uh, part of the duodenum until the uh, uh, pr proximal, until the end of the, uh, the third, one-third of the transverse, distal one-third of the transverse colon, and from the distal one-third of the transverse colon, the hind gut it begins and uh, is supplied by the inferior mesentric uh, artery. Uh, the superior mesentric artery gives branch to the colon as follows, the ileocecal, the first one, uh, this uh, ileocecal branch, uh, which gives the uh, colic branch uh, and cecum and branch to the ileum, uh, the, uh, and the appendicular branch uh, also to the appendix. Uh, the right colic branch, 
in the right colic uh, gives the descending and ascending branch and for the uh, part of the ascending colon and part of the transverse colon the middle colic uh, branch gives the uh, right and left branch to the transverse colon until the uh, supply until the two thirds of the transverse colon. The inferior mesenteric artery supply the colon uh, as far as the upper rectum. This is the uh, inferior mesenteric artery. It's slightly to the left, but the uh, superior mesenteric artery was slightly to the uh, right. Uh, this inferior mesenteric, the first branch is the left colic. This uh, gives the ascending and descending branch. This is the left colic, and the second one is the sigmoid uh, to the sig uh, to the sigmoid uh, colon, and uh, this one is the uh, branch to the rectal the rectal artery branch uh, gives the hem uh, superior hemorrhoidal branch to the rectum. Uh, the vessels from the superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric anastomosis and uh, give rise to the marginal artery of Drummond. This margin called the marginal artery runs along the in inner uh, surface of the colon. Uh, in case of infarction or ischemia to the uh, one part of the colon, uh, the collaterals uh, supply the, that part. This area at the splenic flexure is more prone to ischemia uh, because of uh, fewer collateral. Relations of the colon. The parts of the colon that are retroperitoneal uh, have uh, as their posi posterior relations the uh, structures of the posterior abdominal wall. Uh, that is the psoas iliac muscle. Uh, this is the psoas and the uh, iliacus muscle and the uh, quadratus lumborum. This is uh, located uh, at the posterior of the ascending and descending. Also, the kidneys are posterior to the ascending and descending colon. The more mobile transverse and sigmoid colon are related posteriorly to the loops of small intestine. The colon is an anterior structure in the abdomen and has the, an, as the anterior abdominal wall as anterior relation, uh, particularly uh, when full. The liver and the gallbladder and the spleen as superior relation, and the sigmoid, uh, the sigmoid and rectum are related anteriorly to the bladder and uh, retrophysical uh, in the male and uh, uterus in the female. Venous drainage of the colon, uh, veins corresponding with the arteries drain to the superior and inferior mesenteric vein. Uh, the superior mesenteric vein uh, with the splenic vein forms the portal vein, and the inferior mesenteric vein drains to the uh, splenic uh, vein before the uh, before it goes to uh, attached to the, to the uh, inferior superior mesenteric and forms the portal vein. Uh, superior rohuyen is splenic, or inferior. Yes, it drains to the to yes, it drains to the splenic before uh, it uh, At the end, drains. everything goes to the portal. To the portal, yes. Lymphatic drainage of the colon, uh, the drainage of the uh, right colon to mid-transverse colon to the peripancreatic nodes and superior mesenteric group of paraortic nodes. The drainage of the left side of the colon and left, uh, left transverse and left colon is along the inferior mesenteric vessels to the inferior mesenteric nodes at the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery at the level of the third lumbar vertebrae. <coughs> Development of the colon. Uh, in the intrauterine uh, life, uh, at about fifth week, uh, the mid-gut herniate into the umbilical cord. Uh, this is uh, called physiological herniation. And the vitelointestinal uh, duct at the apex of the hernia. At the 10 week, uh, this uh, gut returns to the uh, abdominal cavity uh, proximal before the uh, proximal bowel before the distal and rotated uh, 270 degree anti-clockwise. In mild rotation, uh, the bowel returns without twisting and the small intestine lies on the right and the colon on the left. The small intestine mesentery is very short and is prone to valvulus. In exomphalus, uh, mid-gut herniation at the umbilicus persists at birth. This is physiological midgut herniation, the part of the midgut herniate into the umbilical and the vitellointestinal duct at its uh, apex. This is physiological herniation. This is fetus and abdomen and physiological at herniation. At what gestational age do you see that? Until 10th uh, week. 5 to 10 weeks yes. of gestation. This is normal. In this case of malrotation, the small intestine is located to the right and the colon to the left. Mm -hmm. The radiological features of the colon, uh, plain film of the abdomen, uh, in the plain film you see gas within the colon, outlines the colon or parts of it. 
The circulation of the colon by the tinea coli give rise to the septa called haustra. The haustra are fixed anatomical structures in the proximal colon, but in the distal colon require active contraction of their to their to formation of it. A haustra may be absent distal to the mid transverse colon. The upper limit of normal diameter of the transverse colon on plain films is taken to be 5 to 0.5 centimeters, uh, and for the cecum 9 centimeters beyond uh, these limits in in the right clinical setting, there is a risk of cecal perforation. Numerous gas fluid level may be normal, and 80% uh, of normal film have fluid levels in the cecum. So when you see a cecum more than nine centimeter or nine centimeter, you have to be very alarmed. Then it will perforate. Nine is the magic number. In case of intestinal obstruction, to distinguish between the dilated bowel uh, loops of the small intestine and large intestine. This is very important. Yes. Uh, the uh, positions uh, of the loops in the small intestine is central, and in the uh, large intestine or colon is uh, peripheral. Uh, the septa uh, in the small intestine valve lay convenience, uh, but in the colon is incomplete, and it's called the haustra. Uh, the uh, loops of the small intestine uh, se uh, several, it's, uh, and in the colon is fewer. The diameter should be less than five centimeters, and in the colon more than five centimeters. Uh, the solid faces uh, absent in the small intestine and may be present in the large intestine. Uh, sometimes the transverse colon uh, is interposed between the uh, liver and the uh, right hemidiaphragm, and this is called chiloiditis syndrome, and should not be mistaken with the nemoperitoneum. Double contrast barium enema examination, the entire colon and appendix may be outlined. Uh, the transverse colon is easier to fill when the patient is prone. And uh, in the supine, uh, the, flex, uh, the hepatic flexure and the S the hepatic flexure and the ascending colon uh, will be uh, f easily filled. The junction of the cecum with both the, the appendix and the ileum is posterior, uh, so the supine position uh, is good to fill this uh, two structures. Visualization of the sigmoid colon may require oblique views and caudally angled views to overcome the problem of overlapping loops. Similarly, views of the ileocecal area are best obtained with the patient's left side raised because of the posterior middle position of the, uh, this junction. The haustra can be seen well on double contrast view of the colon. Gas distension may obliterate these distally as far as the mid transverse colon. This is how stration, incomplete septa. Uh, here is the cecum, area of cecum. This is the terminal ileum. Uh, this somewhat featureless, smooth. Here is the cecum. So this indicates ascending. incompetent ileocecal valve because you are seeing the terminal ileum yes. first. So you can keep in mind when the uh, transverse colon is long, the sigmoid will be short. When the sigmoid colon is long, the transverse will be short. Usually it's like that. And here this hepatic flexure and here the splenic flexure which is higher. This is the transverse, this is the descending and here's the sigmoid. The angiography of the inferior mesenteric uh, artery. Uh, here's the inferior mesenteric which is slightly to the right. Uh, gives the uh, left colic branch and sigmoid branch and superior rectal branch. CT of the abdomen, uh, the cecum and ascending colon can be seen anterior to the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall on the right side. The right paragolic gutter lies lateral to the ascending colon. The right infracolic uh, space lies medially. The hepatic flexure can be seen lateral to the second part of the duodenum, inferior, inferior to the right lobe of the liver. The transverse colon varies in its position because of its variable length and its mo mobility. Fat, blood vessel, and leaf nodes may be seen in the mesocolon. The splenic flexure is seen behind the greater curvature of the stomach and the anterior, and the anterior splenic tip. The descending colon is seen lying on the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall. On the left side, the left paragolic gutter lies laterally to the ascending, descending colon, and the left infracolic space is medial. The sigmoid colon has, uh, can be distinguished from the small intestine loops by the presence of solid fecal mat matter and gas, 
it, uh, it's large caliber uh, it's relatively featureless smooth wall and by the f uh, by the following it's sigmoid course from the descending colon to rectum this is the t ct uh, here it shows the uh, colon this is the ascending colon uh, medial to it is the duodenum and uh, laterally it's the uh, right right paracolic gutter and medially is the infracolic space. This is laterally right paracolic gutter and medially infracolic space. And here the descending lateral to it is the right uh, left paracolic gutter and medial to it left infracolic uh, space. <coughs> and posterior to the uh, descending uh, of the ascending and descending is the uh, posterior abdominal wall and kidney, abdominal wall muscle and the kidney. This picture shows CT colonography. This, uh, this technique will, uh, it's used to in which the colon is distended with air or gas and uh, after an antispasmodic agent. And uh, the, uh, this is shown here as the, uh, the lumen of the colon. And if there is a mass or polyp, uh, can be seen. And that's all. Thank you very much.